It's Sunday at New York Comic Con. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Who's excited for some Manifest Season 2 talk? Tara Bennett. I am a senior producer at Sci-Fi Wire, and I'm so happy. It's like full circle. We had you guys here last year for season one, and now we're back for season two. We get to talk about all the mystery, and, and boy, we left on a cliffhanger. Some good stuff to talk about. So the trailer, how many of you guys got a chance? Because, you know, sometimes it's a little hard to see things here on the floor, but there's a trailer for season two that dropped just an hour ago. How many of you got to see it? Good, all right, so I don't want to spoil anything, but there's some good stuff to talk about in that trailer. So we'll start with Jeff, just because you're the EP and you're the man with the answers. Hello, sir. Hello there. So uh, we got to, you know, why don't we start with a cliffhanger where uh, <laughs> there's some danger at the end of uh, season one where we've got um, poor Jared and Zeke and Michaela and a sh shotgun blast inside of an apartment. And that doesn't seem good. So you left us all waiting. Um, but in the trailer, Michaela is around. <laughs> so that's a, that's a good sign. Tell me a little bit about what you wanted to do Aside from resolve the cliffhanger when we come back in spring of 2020, but what, what were the thoughts about where you go for season two? Uh, we're going in so many directions in season two, but yes, you're right. We left everybody with a seri several serious cliffhangers, yeah. but one in particular, Gunshot, Jared, Zeke, Michaela, <laughs> somebody took a bullet and it's not gonna be pretty. And just because all of the actors are sitting here, doesn't necessarily mean that everybody's alive and well. There's a lot of flashbacks and manifests, so yes. somebody could be a ghost is all that I'm saying. <laughs> don't, um, don't get complacent, people, just because they're all here. Um, you know, obviously, the, the, the core of the show is with Ben and Michaela and their relationship. There's a little bit of conflict in that trailer that we see between the two of you. You guys have gone through it as siblings in season one. Where are we in season two with you guys? Where are we season two? I mean, I think Ben and Michaela are uh, still trying to figure out where they stand and how they feel about the callings. They each come at it at a, at a different angle. And I think that's going to flip flop as we go through. So I, I think it does create some tensions going through, especially at the beginning. However, Ben and Michaela there's nothing that's gonna really break them apart. Tension, right. Tension like brother and sister. No, yeah. yeah, yeah. No matter the conflict, they're still they together through all other. of this. There's, nothing, there's nothing like the love that lets us share our last name, something like that. I don't know, <laughs> I can't remember. So otherwise, well, Ben and Grace, uh, a little bit of <laughs> information that came out at the end in that finale. Someone's gonna have a baby, but uh-oh. Someone is gonna some... have a baby. Who will it be? <laughs> Drama. <laughs> so, that's, you know, listen, uh, it's dinner. already been hard enough in season one. You know, you guys were apart for so long, building that marriage back together again. This is just another a facet to that. It's bringing you together, apart. How's the, how, what can we expect for, for this little information to, to do to the, the still building back together marriage here? You will learn who the daddy is. Ooh, okay. That's good. We like to hear that. I won't say who, <laughs> in a very surprising way. Actually, I was surprised when I read it. I was like, oh, this is great. I love oh, nice. that they've done okay. this. Um, they being this wonderful man. I mean, there's a whole they yeah. around him. Um, but I, we are very solid, I think. I don't, I don't know if that's a spoiler. Not but really. That's good. Ben and Grace are a nice real team. place to look forward to. That's sure. good. That's good. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about the kids, you guys. Tell me, give us a little tease of what's going to come with the, with, the, with the brother. You know, we've got these siblings, as, uh, but then you guys, tell us what, what you can tease about what's coming for you guys. Well, we're obviously still connected. Yeah, good. of course. That's good, yeah. yay. Of course, still connected. Um, definitely in season two, there's a lot going on for... Cal and Olive yeah. separately. Um, for myself, I can say that it's definitely a massive turn that happens and a little bit of a downward spiral for Miss Olive Stone, but you know, we're getting through it as everyone is on this show, I guess, is yeah, <laughs> getting exactly. through it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's great and I'm looking forward to shooting more with this dude, always. Good, yeah. good, good, good. All right, let's talk about Sanvi 
and let's okay. talk about where we left her and what's coming up uh, that we can tip into this season. Sanvi is going to have more trauma and <laughs> talk too much to the wrong person. Oh, no. And that's all I know. Oh, that's a good teaser. Oh, and we are going to meet 8B. Oh, nice. That's a good one. All right. So we got this concept of death dates at the end of last year as well, and uh, that's really intriguing. Tell me a little bit, Jeff, about how that's going to kind of unfold. Uh, anybody getting an idea of that they now have a time clock kind of ticking down, knowing that you'll survive as long as uh, your death date is, is, is associated with how long that you were missing? Right. So... Uh all of the passengers realized in the season finale that they may only have five and a half years to live. Yikes. It's the exact amount of time that they had been gone. And so season two spends a lot of time really focused on that death date, both in a very practical sense, uh, Ben and Michaela, Sanvi, uh, each trying to solve the death date, if you will, trying to figure out why do they only have five and a half years? Is there any way around uh, having such a limited time. And that's part of the mystery that uh, we will be pursuing in, in, in the season. And by the end of season two, you'll understand a lot more about that. But then on the other side, there's the emotional a part of the equation. What would you do if you, only, if you knew, right? If you knew that you only had five years to live, yeah. what does that mean about your relationships? What does that mean about the choices that you make in your everyday life? Uh, 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 your, your romantic bucket list, your, your emotional bucket list, uh, having closure, uh, making those hard choices. And that informs uh, so many of the characters' lives yeah. throughout the season. So let's talk a little bit about Michaela and, uh, and Jared uh, in terms of what does that mean? That seems to me like it's a teaser towards how, where do you go with the two of them? It's still complicated. <laughs> it's still the, lo lots of tendrils. Uh, what can you tease about the two of you guys? Well, I guess it all depends if Jared, Michaela, or Zeke are still alive. Yeah. So. Yes. Uh, I can't say anything. This is the hardest. This <laughs> is the hardest I interviews I've so ever. Can... I literally can't say anything. Well, so. I'll come in for management and say whether alive or dead. It's always going to be complicated. The romantic triangle continues between these three, and it's incredibly complicated and problematic for uh, for Michaela in particular. Uh, it, Melissa, I'll let you dance around that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Actually, yeah, you know what, guys? Zeke dies. How about that? <laughs> Zeke got the bullet. But Kayla just word, finds he says. herself season two. She's single. No. I mean, look, there's a new guy in the picture, and they, they share this connection that's kind of out of this world. Um, her heart's, you know, gotten a lot of complications with Jared, and and then, yeah, we don't, we don't know who makes it. Maybe that narrows down her choices, so there you go. Yeah. Oops, one died. Well... Yeah. Well, Matt, talk a little bit about coming into the series and what you wanted to do. Zeke is such an interesting character and how you wanted to bring him into the show and now as you get to evolve and, you know, kind of show him now with this group of people, uh, what's been most interesting to kind of uh, build with him and where you want to go with him? Uh, I've been really fortunate and, and very thankful to have a lot of really interesting backstory and really compelling things to tell uh, from Zeke. I loved uh, his character at the beginning, being out in the woods and, and stuck in the cave. It was very different than anything I've played before, yeah. but also really near and dear to me because we go, my family and I go camping a lot. We love to go hiking and backpacking as much as we can. Uh, and so when I got to the stone home, I, I kept telling Melissa how weird it felt to be there because I had <laughs> yes. I only knew Zeke out, you know, surviving. You're doing your own thing, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Uh, and I mean, not to give anything away this season, but. There's some really great... I, I, I don't even know what I can say. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm worried about... <laughs> Your boss is here. Yeah, He's going to yell at you I, after. I don't want to reveal things. <laughs> um, it continues to be compelling and interesting, and we have flashbacks, so it's not really telling anything at all. Yeah, but, good. Yeah. Well, spring 2020. We get to see all of this unfold. We're so excited that you guys are back, and thank you for coming back here. Yes. Thank so you. happy rest of your Comic-Con. Thanks, Thanks for coming everyone. out, Comic-Con. Thank you, guys. And up next, guys, we got Matt Wagner and Brennan Wagner, and they'll be talking about all their good stuff. Thanks for being here.